Hey guys, this is the videotape with Bishop Whitehead interviewing Levantre. And Levantre is painting a picture of how he was allegedly assaulted as a young man of 15 years old by Larry Reed. Let's take a listen. As one of my brothers now, um, and I heard your story. And um, I heard the allegations against Larry Reed. And um, I just want you to just introduce yourself as whoever you want to introduce yourself as. And let's, let's, just, let's just go with it, man. Let's just go with the flow. I'll ask you a few questions. Um, and, you know, I know that you got to relive this thing, brother. And um, so, you know, just do your best. I'm not pushing you to do anything that you don't want to do. Um, we heard the, uh, we heard you speak about the allegations, I think last week or two weeks ago, but there's a lot of people up here that don't know. So I don't know if you want to get into, uh, what, um, was, a, what you're allegedly saying that Larry Reed did to you. Um, and I know that there was an age, um, trickery thing going on with Larry Reed. Maybe you can explain. So go ahead, my brother. Thank you so much for being on and. You got the floor. Come on, man. I appreciate it. Can you hear me? Yep, I hear you. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to um, hop on quick now. I don't want to be on here too long. It's just already late. But, um, yeah, I appreciate you uh, extending extend the platform for sure, man. Uh, the, the conversation we had earlier, you know, the, the energy felt the way I needed to feel, which uh, made me feel kind of what talk to now. So, I, I appreciate that. Uh, but yes, it's just a few things I wanted to speak to, man. Um, but first off, I wanted to say, uh, the people that know me, know my voice, um, that reached out since this whole scenario, uh, reinvented itself with, uh, with you know, and Reed. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the DMs and the calls. And, uh, because people that know me know that it's just something that I would slide about, man. You know what I'm saying like and, and one thing that I'm um clear on uh, more now than ever is that uh the church because that's the space that, that Reed is in people are just gonna believe him man and that's just something that we gotta deal with is people are gonna believe him and it's just gonna be that you know even 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 with what with what I'm saying being proven because he's saying it than that people some people are just gonna believe it you know what I'm saying? Even with evidence, et cetera, that none of that would matter to some people. So that's that's just what we gotta deal with. So it is what it is, man. But I, I appreciate uh I appreciate everybody that's reached out to me. You know who you are. So I, I appreciate the support. But um yeah, I wanted to speak to um the age thing. So I'm gonna start there. So this whole narrative that he's trying to push, that he's trying to really it's been the basis of, of why he's saying everything I've ever said was false. Well, well brother, so 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 but, so before you get to the age thing, the people that don't know what's going on, um, whatever you're alleging uh, Larry has done, just let them know that before you get to the age thing. Let them know because a lot of people... Well, let me just open it like this. So I have a police report, right? I have a police report in front of me from Raleigh Police Department, right? And it says um, sex offense, forcible fondling, um, and this was filed in 2018, and the address is 3216 Oyster or Oyste Drive, O O L U S T E E Drive. Now, my team, we pulled up the um, title documentation, the deed documentation, and this house was deeded to Larry Reed and his wife, Elisa Reed. So. This police report, right? right? Um, can you tell us about this police report if you know anything about it? Yes. So what I'll say with full confidence, no nothing behind it, Larry Reed molested. Hold on, they, they, they didn't, I don't know if they heard you. Say it one more time. Larry Reed molested. Hold on, hold on, sorry. The phone just fell. One more, one more, sorry, one more. Okay, say one more time, brother. Now Larry Reed, he for sure molested me. Wow. And this didn't happen. I saw he was trying to say that um, 
Well, I'll get to that in a second. But so the, the police report that's filed. So um, when it was filed, so when, I, when I first spoke to the detective, they had to give, and I, he had, he needed me to give a physical address at the time. I could, that was the only address that I actually, I lived, I lived with him in, in a couple different uh, locations. He moved around quite a bit during that time. And I lived at, I lived with him at uh, several different locations. And that was the only address that I could remember. Because it was years later. That was the only, only address that I could remember. Um, just off the top of my head, and, and that, and I knew that it happened at that address. So that was that's why that address is on the uh, on the on the police report. Uh-huh. Uh, the uh, get to the age thing. So uh, one, of the, one of the other guys I talked to, I did a uh, it was a couple years ago. I did an interview with a guy, and me talking quick, I said fourteen. I met him. Early 2006, it was, I can't remember the exact, uh, exact month, but it was like January, February, March, somewhere in there, right? And from there is, is when I, that's when I met him. But the actual inappropriate behavior started maybe a few months after that. I, I, to the actual age, I'll just make that clear. I was 15 when that happened. And he wants to push this mad of me being 14 and all that. But like the reality is, this man did something inappropriate with a, teen, a teenager, a child. So, so do you do you want to get into what he did, brother, really quickly? I mean, so, I mean in a nutshell, man, he, he, he molested me. So the the, the ground of it is, it, is it, he, he basically he manipulated me, and I, I said this on the other interview, but he manipulated me because of the father boy that I didn't have. I didn't have, I didn't have my dad at the time. And he knew I needed that boy's feel. And he, the entire relationship, he, he, he gave it a spiritual basis. And the entire time he was praying on me because he felt like I could, I could be easily manipulated. And so that's, that's what happened. He, uh, he, he started, uh, he started out real casually and he played one of the clips with the, with the underwear thing. Um, and it just progressed from there, man. And hold on, let me, let me speak to this real quick, man. The second clip that you played is crazy. I, I've never heard that clip um, about the whole "I've sucked dick before" like that. that, that I've never heard that. That's uh, crazy. Uh, and so I, I've never heard him say that before, like uh, on a platform. So just so I'm clear, right? I have me personally. I've never performed any sexual acts on this cat. None of that. that that's that. That wasn't what happened. What, I, what I'm specifically talking about. Of things that he did to me and gave it a spiritual basis. Like the entire reason for the, the things that he did with me, it, it was he gave it a spiritual basis saying it was, it was it was his way of protecting me from being a version of myself that wasn't good. So he was like, you know, he felt like I was going to be a womanizer or he thought I was going to be a gay male, right? And he would always have me come to him anytime I felt the urge to have sex basically and he would say well i'm gonna i'm gonna help you through that process and so he gave it a very a very spiritual context right and with me because of the age that i was at i wasn't able to fully understand what was happening and now you know I'm, my mind is more mature i'm able to see it with 2020 vision man he, he finessed me from the beginning from the, from the beginning he was finessing me and uh I'm just able to see that now, man. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but I'm, I'm able to see it. It's very clear now. Very clear now. And um, he just prayed on that whole not having my dad there, man. I, we could have very intimate conversations about that. He, he, he knew how I felt about not having my dad in my life. And uh, he just used that to his advantage, man. To his advantage. At the time, he uh, he wasn't married. Um, he, I think they got divorced. Like the, I think it was like the second time. They got the divorced and remarried like three or four times. I think this was like the second divorce. And uh, he would even, you know, talk to me about that. It was like, he was developing like this like father-son relationship. And so I trusted him and I just trusted him. And and, and my uh, my naive nature at the time and me just wanting that father figure and thinking that he could be that, it caused these things to happen, man. And unfortunately, this is what repeats itself over and over again in the church. Unfortunately,
discussion. This, this is what this is what it is. What, what we are now, man. So, um, I just wanted to speak to that uh, the the police report about the address. So, but the address. The only reason that that's the address on the on the report is because at the time when I was uh, when I, the first conversation I had with the detective, that was the only address that I could remember just off the top of my head. But just to be clear, that's not the only address that these things happen at. He lived at a, a house in Morrisville. Can't remember the, the name of the address. Um, and it, like this, this happened more than one time. So this is interesting, man. That, that they'll try to take this uh, this one piece and like make that like a basis for why something is, isn't true, man. You just gotta to, gotta use your, your mind a little bit, man. Um, I also wanted to speak to. I saw recently he posted. Uh, I don't know if he, no, it was a, it was a statement that he made. And in the statement, he said that he met he met me when I was gone. He, he, he said the three guys they were grown, and he said he met me when I was gone. I, I don't know why he's saying or why anybody around him is allowing him to say that because I went to school. I was in high school when I lived with him. I, I drove his car to school. He's on my. Uh, if you would pull up my my high school my high school. Uh, records and see who was the people of contact on my on my contact list. His name was always there. Wow. So it's not possible for him to have met me when I was grown if he was on my high school uh, information, like on my, my contact information for high school. So this is, it's, I think he's just fishing, man. He's trying to just, because he, he knows what the truth is. He knows what the truth is. Uh, I can't say the people around him know what the truth is because uh, they weren't physically there. But he knows what the truth is, man. And I don't know why. He's, well, I do know why. I do know why. It's this. And that clip that you keep playing, that I understand, man, that's, that's, that's crazy. Um, and, and, and this is where, if you understand Reed, man, because I, I, I was around this cat every day for years. If you understand that, if you, if you listen to Reed talk long enough, you're going to tell on yourself. Oh. And him saying that, whether anybody would acknowledge it or not, him saying that is his way. It's like an internal acknowledgement for himself. He won't. He won't ever out like say it out of his mouth because he has too much to lose now, right? He will never say it out of his mouth. And and it's it's also funny too, man. Um, that clip at the, at the end of that clip, how he says, if he's if it ever comes out, uh, I I lie about him. I'm not, I'm not even gonna tell you no lie. Something that he used to say to me, and this is how I. After I started to unravel these thoughts, man, these feelings that I was having, one of the things that I realized or remembered about during those times is something that he would always say is, you know, you, you can't never tell nobody. Or he would say stuff like, um, if you ever tell somebody, who they going to believe? Me and you. Or he would say stuff like, uh, if you ever tell somebody, I'm a, I'm a I'm gonna deny it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna deny it to to the jail uh, to the jail closes. I think that you say crazy like that, and with the, with the mature mind, I'm able to see that you're rationalizing to yourself that this is something that you should not be doing. Like you know, you're not supposed to be doing it, and so you're saying this as insurance. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's just it's just interesting, man. Every every time I hear that clip. It's, it's very interesting to hear him say that because that's he's holding to that man. He, he told me that he would he would deny it until he couldn't anymore. And it's unfortunate, man, because him continuing to not to deny it because of the space he's in, people are just gonna believe him, man. People are just gonna believe him, and and it is what it is. Like uh, he was there, uh, even in that same statement, he was trying to suggest that. You know, I'm, I'm I have unresolved conflict, and I'm and I'm upset um, or angry because he dropped me or something. I'm like, bro, like it, it's, it's it, to hear him speak like that, better let me know I'm much of a narcissist. Yeah, man. Um, I don't need this kind of my life. Don't want him out in my life. I, he's a clown to me, honestly. He's a, he's a clown. He's a clown. He's a clown that found some money. That's what it is. Like, he's a clown. Like it, we, we would never be cool. Like us separate from any of this happening. Who I am right now and who he is as a person. Like he's a goofball. Like we we would never be in the same room. And so um, it's just 
interesting that he would try to create that narrative because when we uh, when we stopped talking, I was the one that stepped, that made the, the, the separation. I deleted his number. I deleted him off Facebook. I deleted him on Instagram. I don't follow. I don't know nothing that's going on with this cat. It's only only time I know something's going on with him is when these type of scenarios present themselves. Other than that, this cat is not on my radar. I'm not even thinking about it. But this, this, you know, when these kind of scenarios happen, it happens. You know what I mean? But that's that's where I'm at, man. Um, well, let me say, let me ask you this, right, brother? Um, because like I said, there's a lot of people that did not hear because you said about the underwear. Um, but if if you want to, I don't, I don't want to push it on. But if you can just let them know about the underwear piece that that I know that was one thing that you had brought up. Yeah. So yeah, I'll speak to that real quick, man. Huh? And this, any, anybody that was around during that time, that's familiar with this man. Um. That was like this culture. It's, it's something that I wasn't familiar with at all, man. Like before, before I met these guys, I was in a very interesting space in life, man. I had just started to get into, you know, the street stuff. Like I was joining gangs and doing a little weird stuff, right? And so when I met these guys, like they had this thing where they wanted to try to change me. And so they did that. I mean, they literally, man, I'm talking about threw away all I had, like, Time like 30, 40 pairs of sneakers, something like that. A bunch of shoes. They threw all of my sneakers away, threw all my clothes away, and took me shopping. Right? Trying to like change my image. I need to be a uh, a cleaner version of myself. At the time, I was wearing these big clothes and, you know, typical teenage stuff during that time. And, uh, you know, they on this whole let me change your image thing. And something that, like, that, that they seem to be overly conscious about are um male prints like in your pants and like i'm like i'm 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 not a print watcher i wasn't then i'm still not now and it was just always weird to me i'm like like, what are you talking about like like when you're walking in your pants and your print is showing like it's that's that's inappropriate you know what i'm saying like that's how they would describe it and i'm like well it was it was just it was just really weird during the time and i'm not the only one i know it Anybody that was in the church at the time, man, he's probably bought underwear for him. any male in the church. He, he was he was very intentional about buying underwear for for men in the church because he could see their print, right? Like who, like no, that's not even gonna go on that tangent. But so, guys, this part was very striking to me when he said, "Any male in the church, any male in the church, he would insist on buying underwear for." Because he told them that he can see their print and he would take them shopping for underwear. And that is all part of the grooming, folks. That's how they get you to take your clothes off. Because in order for you to try on underwear, you have to take your clothes off. So you see, it's very subtle. And a lot of young people who are not thinking along that line will fall for it and they will take their clothes off to try on underwear and it seemed very official because according to Lavantre, he would he took him shopping and he tried on underwear in the store but when he got back to the house he asked him to try on the other underwear just to see if it fit just right now a young 15 year old whose mind is innocent, is going to fall for it. An older person is not going to fall for it, but a young person will. When you're 14, 15, 12, 11, around that age group, you don't know the ways of the world and how cunning people are. And if they want to get into your pants, the ways they will do it. It's very, very subtle. And unfortunately, Levantre fell for it. He took his clothes off in the store. He got back to the house and he... This is all alleged, but you will hear him say that Larry Reed wanted him to try on the other underwear just to make sure they fit right. Now, (laughs) that is just, I mean, if it's correct what he's saying, this is just classic, just trying to um, 
to disrobe a person when they don't know better. That's one of the tactics these um, groomers use. And you know what? I'm not even going to tie a neat little ribbon on it. I'm going to call it for what it is. One of the tactics these pedophiles use, because he was underage at the time. He was only 15. He was not yet an adult. So he was still a child. And if it's correct what he's saying, then Larry Reed was a pedophile. This is all alleged. So anyway, he, uh, the first time that I was with him, when it was just me, he and I, first time that ever happened, I was actually living um, around the corner from him, the old lusty, 32, was it 32, 16, old lusty? I was, I was living around the corner from him at the time. And uh, he came and picked me up on a Saturday morning. Took me to uh, took me to Walmart. Uh, yeah, it was Walmart, and bought me underwear. He wanted me to try the underwear on, and uh, in inside of the Walmart, so I tried my one pair, just one pair, and I tried one pair on, and uh, he was like, "All right, well, they seem like they fit." So he said, "We'll we'll take the other ones back to the house and try them on." Yeah. And guys, this is why I said in the other video, if it's true, there's got to be other victims because. He said Larry Reed was in the habit of having all the young men in the church, in his church. He would have them accept these gifts, these underwear gifts from him. He would have them try on underwear and give them a gift of underwear. That's very peculiar, folks. What man? What red-blooded man? It have a fixation on another man's underwear. You tell me. I tried one pair on. And uh, he was like, all right, well, they seem like they fit. So he said, we'll, we'll take the other ones back to the house and try them on. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, look, you know. I'm and that's a red flag right there. Why couldn't he try on all the underwear right there in the store since he was disrobed? Why does he have to go back, or why did he have to go back to the house and try on the rest? That's just a little setup, you know? You, I'm telling you guys, you have to school your children properly because you're not around them 24-7 to see what's going on. You're not with them at school. You're not with them in the little play facilities that they go to the after-school programs. You have to teach your children that when these predators come around them, the signs and what to look for and question them when they come home. And as a matter of fact, you should be popping in, spot checking. When you drop them off at the Y or drop them off for bowling or drop them off for swimming, baseball, soccer, whatever, don't just drop them off and leave. You sit there in the car like, a half a block away and just observe if they're outdoors. When they're indoors, you're popping. You you drop them off and then you're popping up back. Next half an hour, you're back. Just, you know, just observing. Let me tell you, when my child was young, I did not allow my child to go anywhere if I wasn't there. I was that protective. If she went to soccer, guess what? Guess who's going to soccer too? If she went to bowling, horse riding, swimming, tennis, golf, whatever, I was right there, okay? Because once a child has been touched and molested, it stays with them for life. And I did not want my child to be scarred for life. So I said, you know what? I'm going to invest the time to make sure my child is not scarred for life. So I was there. No matter where my child was, I was there. If she went on a trip to the zoo, guess who took off from work and went on a trip to the zoo? Yes, yours truly. Anyway, let's continue to listen. I'm still naive. I'm, it's just weird to me, but because of you know who he is, I feel like I can trust him. I'm like, all right, okay, cool. So went back to his house, man, and uh, was in his room at the time. Uh, was he was he divorced to the time? 
I can't remember if he was the voice at this at this point or no, nah, I can't remember. What what, what 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 age were you at this time when this happened? I was fifteen. Fifteen? All right. I was fifteen, yep. I was 15. I love so, that. And so he took me back to the crib and he wanted me to try the underwear on like, in the room. So I'm like, like I said, I'm still like, I'm like, all right, you know. But he, I guess he was saying like he wanted to make sure that they fit, and they were doing the job that they were supposed to be doing. I guess. I was like, all right, so we went to the crib. I put the underwear on. He was like, all right, so that's that's how they supposed to fit. And so I'm taking the underwear off, okay, and I'm trying to like put my clothes back on without uh, putting my pants on. And. He was like, this this is how like it's like so he's trying to he's trying to make it like an educational moment. He was like, so this is how you now as a man, you know, this is how you're supposed to your know, your penis is supposed to hang. And he pulled his pants down. And when he pulled his pants down, it was two he had, he had jeans on it, blue jeans on, he pulled his pants down. And it was two things I've noticed. He didn't have one underwear and he had a erection. It was like a like a like not a full erection, but it was erect, right? And I looked up and I'm like, and immediately I'm like, what? Like, but I, I didn't have the nerve in me to be like, yo, I, I, I didn't have the nerve in me at the time to just confront it. But immediately I noticed, I'm like, why is this nigga? Like, why? like, it was just, it was immediately weird to me. Immediately weird to me. And so, from that, I, what I now, what I now know is that he was just, he was testing the waters, man. That's this is a tactic. This is a tactic that predators do, man. They 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 slowly, slowly see how much they can get away with. And that's how they able to determine how much of a uh, a prey you are, how easy of a prey you are. They just they start slow and then they and they progress from there. You know what I'm saying? And and that's that's how it happened. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. Well, um, Brother, I know you um stated also, I don't know if you want to get into it, but I know you said that there's some um other things that you never even said. So I don't know if you want to get into that, but I know you said there were some other things that you have that you didn't say to anybody. Do you want to get into that or no, we'll, we'll get into that later, man. It's it's a lot that I and it's a lot that I haven't said, man. A lot of it when I was talking to my wife, man, a lot of this stuff, man, is it's a blur. To be completely honest, man, like a lot of it is a blur. A lot of it I remember very vividly, and and I think what's like I know this now because of the the counseling that I've done. Our minds, our brains have this. It's a way of self self protecting. When you experience something that was traumatic, our brains have a way of self protect, and and that's what my brain has done over the years, man. Um, certain events, like when any time I talk about this, I start remembering more. Right, this is what was happening uh, when I was having the conversations with Dale uh, the, the, a couple of years ago. As I was talking about it, things that I completely forgot about, I started to remember. And there's, there's so many things, man, that I could go into that would like, it, you would be like, man, you, you ain't no way. Like, because we, at the end of the day, we're talking about somebody that's a pastor. And the things that I've seen, the things that I've experienced, like you wouldn't even, you wouldn't believe it, man. You would not believe it. So, yeah, I, I, I'm going to hold on from that, man. Because uh, I, I really, honestly, not because I'm, I'm afraid to talk about it. I just want to make sure I have all of my thoughts together. Because when you're recalling things uh, from trauma, like, it, it, it gets blurry. That's how, that's how, uh, when I when I first talked to Daryl and I, and I said the 14 thing, that was a result of, of the trauma. Like, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to recall everything that's ha- that happened to me and process it. And I just, I said that number, but it is what it is, man. I, I know what happened. He knows what happened. And, you know, that's what that is. So. Yeah, brother. Well, listen, man, I support you. And I'm telling you publicly that um, I'm going to um, have you connect with an attorney right to protect you and your family and to move forward with whatever legal proceedings that you need to do and i'm paying for it um that's what i can do and if you need any help with any therapy or whatever um i have someone that i that i use that um 
you know, for my church, my ministry, and um, that's someone that I trust. And if you need that, I'll take care of the bill for that as well. Um, <clears throat> um, and I don't want to get into the uh, the op open investigation in North Carolina, but I just want to ask one question. That case is still open, correct? Oh, it's for sure still open, man. All right. Um, yep, you can leave it right there. I just okay. want to. I just want to make sure because um, uh, people were saying that that case was closed and this, this, that, and the third. So, yes, that case is still open. It's a still open child molestation case. And um, this young man stated that it's against Larry Reed. Um, so these are the allegations. Um, brother, I want you to know that... Um, I'm proud of your strength and people really need to hear your story. Whatever I can do, I'm here. However, one thing that I'm going to do is connect you with an attorney. You don't have to worry about no fees. I'm going to pay it. Um, if you need therapy, more therapy, because brother, I'm already knowing that it's rough. Um, dealing with trauma is rough. I've never been molested in my life. However, I've been traumatized in my life, which is different things throughout my life. Um, so I understand what trauma is. So that's what I'm going to do for you. Um, so any therapy, it'll be on me and your attorney to deal with your legal stuff. I will pay for it. Um, and people are asking me, did I pay you to come up here? Brother, did I pay you to come up here? Never. Never. <laughs> so I want to just get that out of the, in in the way and out of the way really quickly. Um, so, listen, you guys. Let, let, me, let me speak to that real quick, man. All right, go ahead. Like, people are so weird, man. People are so weird, bro. Like, why would you think? Why would your first thought, after everything I just said, right? Why would your first thought be if he paid you? <laughs> And why not, why not prior to considering that, why not consider, is what this guy's saying actually true? And let me just go on record to say, if I'm lying about this, I deserve, and I said this before, if this is something that I'm blatantly lying about, I deserve everything that comes with that. Because I'm, if, if I'm lying, I'm intentionally trying to destroy this man that has done nothing to me. Wow. I'm not lying about this. And anybody that knows me personally, they, they know, they know, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm talking to somebody that, you know, it is what it is, but I, whoever said it, I want you to just consider that, like, consider is this actually something that happened in the church that you protect, you protect these guys that do this, man, like, and that's, that's been the problem, that's, that's to, my, to this day, man, I, I have this, this thing with the church, man. And it's, it's because of stuff like this, man. Not just with me. I've seen other things happen. And just being a part of the church world, I've, just, I've seen things happen. things happen. And the church takes the stance of, you know, let me protect him because he's the voice. Let me protect them because they're, you know, they're the leader. Let me, you know, regardless of what they do, we see it on, online all the time. You know, let me, let me protect them. And there's never any real accountability, man. And, and spiritual people know what I'm about to say. Like the, the pendulum is swinging, man. The pendulum is swinging. You you don't you don't get to handle people any in any kind of way, and and not expect for that to ripple back to you. I don't care how long if you, if you don't fix that intentionally, it's coming back, man. The pendulum is going to swing, man. And and I think all of what's happening, not just with this scenario. There's other stuff I can get into with him personally that I, I recently found out. But you like life life does not allow that kind of stuff to happen, man. And, and you don't you don't have any any uh type of uh recoil to come back on you, man. That's just how it goes. Well and this way is in your interest. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying this this way is in his interest. Uh. Well brother Listen, um, <clears throat> I support you, and like I told you earlier, you know, I don't do a lot of talking. Um, I just show up, you know what I mean? And you will be um, connected with my attorney um, tomorrow, 
um, if you're available, or Monday, no later than Monday. Um, and I already spoke to him, and um, he already know what it is. So you good to go. All he got to do is to have a conversation with you, and you guys have your attorney-client privilege. All I'm doing is putting the, putting the money up. Um, and um, as far as therapy, um, if you need that, all you got to do is holler at me. I have someone that you could talk to. Um, and I just want to be able to represent the church in a different way. That's it. Um, there are a lot of people that's going to, you know, come at you um, because the, they just don't understand. It is what it is. Um, and, um, you know, you got to speak your truth, you know. And, um, you know, these allegations are terrible. And I think that, you know, if we look at this world, you know, and if you have any children out here, for your child to be um, touched by somebody, right, you're going to feel some type of way. So with these allegations, you know, we need answers. We need answers. I, I, I know I need answers. And for this Larry Reed to go on his platform and say that the person who gave, who he allegedly think gave me the recordings of this young man, he said, well, I, I sued him and all of this stuff was thrown out because it was all false. Lo and behold, now I get in contact with the actual young man with these allegations. So we're not talking about no old tape. We're talking about right now. And the case is still open. So um, we need answers, you know, and that's just what it is. So, brother, um, you know, I appreciate you trusting me to bring you on this platform. And, um, you know, people thought that I set up the robbery of my church. And now that they caught two of the guys, now people are quiet and they got egg in their face and they're apologizing. And pretty much the same thing. When I played the recordings of you, people didn't believe it and they believed Larry Reed um, saying that all that stuff was thrown out and blah, 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 blah. So now you're on right now. So what are they going to say now? At the end of the day, this is for the church and we need to do something about it. So, um, brother, I appreciate you. I'll call you back after I get off the live, but the lawyer is already done. And I don't know if you want therapy. I got that as well. And I just want to be your brother and friend. Um, and, you know, just to help you out, man, if any way I can. Oh, man, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace. All right, y'all. So. Ah. <sighs> Understand if a pastor, leader, teacher, and a sleeping with a student, or I have, I understand that can get sticky. I get all of that. The situation that I've been in, you know, as a pastor, as a mentor, you know, I'm not proud of those situations. And I would never tell you. And if it ever came out, I probably would deny it because I didn't know that. Okay, guys, what I want to say is that grooming is a very slow process. And children do not understand the grooming process. A 15-year-old boy, first of all, does not give consent. And he is still regarded as a child. For the sake of argument, let's say Larry Reed did not touch Levantre. Why would he allow this 15-year-old child to move into his home? That is the question. So he's being thought of as a liar, I'm talking about Levantre because the date of when it happened, when, how old he was, he came up with, I think he said he was 14. And Larry Reed said, I think Larry Reed said he knew him when he was 15. So the age was a discrepancy. But it's one year different. 15-year-olds do not keep note on anything. That's the farthest thing from their mind. Because remember, at 15 years old, you're not thinking about suing anybody for um, sexually abusing you. As far as Levantre was concerned, he was 
happy to get the keys to the car to drive to school to show off. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. He didn't say that. But I'm thinking in terms of a 15-year-old, how they would think. You are driving in style, honey. You got that. Oh, you are maxing and relaxing and all the girls are coming up to you and all the boys want to get to know you because you're the hottest thing, okay, in the school because you're driving a luxury vehicle. So the furthest thing in from his mind is thinking of suing anybody. So he's not writing down notes. He's not jotting down, okay, I took my underwear off on, on this date. I did fellatio on this date. This man asked me to bend over on this date. He propositioned me on this date. You know, you're not thinking of those things to maybe sue later on. You're 15 years old. Maybe an adult would if, if he, you know, somebody in their 20s, more sophisticated and maybe thinking long term just in case. You know, this is a just in case. Let me jot this down. Just in case, let me write this down. 15 years old, trust me, you're not thinking along those lines. You're just happy to get that little money in your pocket and the keys to the car. And honey, you're the hottest thing in town. Everybody wants to get to know you. So when Larry Reed called him out for being a liar, because he said, I didn't even know him when he was 14. He said, I knew him when he was 14. Guess what? It's a small little minor detail that he was not correct on. But 14, 15 apples, oranges, same difference. He was young. Whether he was 14, 15, he was a minor. That is my point. So he said away he got him to take his clothes off. He took him to Walmart and said he was going to fit him for underwear. What the hell is a grown man doing fitting any child for underwear? I don't care what age group. It's not your child. So you shouldn't be taking, uh, encouraging him to take his clothes off in front of you. And the first time he took his clothes off at Walmart, and this is how the grooming process starts. And this is how they get your child, okay? In order for that child to feel comfortable in taking the clothes off in front of strangers, this strange man, they're going to take them to that shop, take them to Walmart or wherever, and tell them, okay, you, you can, you can, uh, you know, change into whatever outfit. I'll be outside. You be in the fitting room. And as soon as you change, they want to see what you look like. Oh, let me see how it fits. Come out. Let me see what you, what you look like in it. How are you going to ask this child to put an underwear on and you examining what he looked like in it? This is all alleged. Okay. This entire video is alleged. So Levandre said, it didn't stop there. He said, you're going to try on the rest of the underwear when we get back to the house. Well, I'm thinking to myself, why, why does he have to go back to the house? He right there in the fitting room, isn't he? That's a good place to try on underwear. If you're going to try on one, why not try on the others? Whether you have one, two, three, four, try them all on right there. But this is how the grooming starts and the molestation starts. They take you back to the house and tell you, okay, you can try on the other underwear. And then they're looking at the outprint of your private part. And I don't know, guys. At 15 years old, I was more sophisticated and savvy. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm female, of course. I mean, you can't compare females to male in this department because a pedophile might approach a female girl child differently than a male boy child. There, there are things that they do with females that they don't do with males and vice versa or things that they say to them because they, they get into the child's brain and they figure out, okay, girls like this and boys like this and I couldn't do this with a boy and I couldn't ask a girl this. I could only ask a boy, etc. So they figure out how to maneuver around children. That's why you got to watch these people like hawks. You hear me? But there's nothing worse than someone abusing you, sexually assaulting, abusing you, raping you. I'm calling it what it is. I'm calling a spade a spade. It's a rape. All this nice little bow that people attach to it. Oh, sexual abuse. Oh, sexual molestation. Bull. It's rape. They penetrate the anus of these children and the vagina and they rape them. They tear them up with blood coming out for days. 
So let's call it what it is. Let's not put a nice little bow on top of it and call it no freaking molestation or, oh, he touched me inappropriately. No, we call it what it is on this channel. They're raping these children, okay? But this is what I want to know. Where were the parents? Was the father gone? Where was the mother? Was the mother busy working and not care what happened to her child? Was he given to another family maybe to be raised? Where were the parents? Because a lot of times when shit hit the fan and these kids come out later on, here comes the mother surface in her little ugly head talking about, oh, he did this to my child and he did that to my child. Well, you know what? This is what I want to ask Levantre's mother. How come she allowed a 15-year-old boy to move in with a grown man? And he's driving a luxury car to school. Didn't she think something was wrong? Some favors were being exchanged? So she allowed this 15-year-old child to move into this grown man's house. Maybe he wasn't living with her. Maybe he was living with other people. But my point is, whoever he was living with allowed him to move in to this grown man's house. What was she thinking? What was she thinking? You see, I believe in accountability. Larry Reed, if he's guilty of all these crimes against this child and possibly other children, all alleged, like I said before, if he's guilty, he's got his reckoning and his day in court. But I want to see the mother of Levantre in court also. That's what I want to see. Because she's just as guilty for signing him over to Larry Reed, for Larry Reed to do whatever he wanted to do with him. You know what, folks? I'm going to wash myself in holy water. I think I need to get these demons off of me from this video. Anyway, I'm over and out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Drop your comments in the comment section. Thank you for watching.